DKA is diabetic ketoacidosis. And if you've ever been there, you know the feeling. It is the worst I could say I've ever felt is the time that I was in DKA. DKA is when there is not enough insulin in your blood. Your body cannot use glucose, the sugar in your blood, for fuel without insulin. So it breaks down fat instead and then acids, ketones, build up. I was in DKA once when I was diagnosed, but that was kind of more gradually developed, so it didn't feel quite as severe as some of you have probably experienced. Those symptoms come on over the course of weeks, maybe even months, depending on how quickly your pancreas is degrading. DKA that happens long after you've been diagnosed happens like that. It happens overnight. It happens over the course of a few hours sometimes. And sometimes it's because of your insulin pump. Sometimes it's because you forgot to take your insulin or skipped your insulin or drank a whole bunch of sugar and decided you weren't going to take insulin for it. Sometimes it's because your insulin uh, has expired and isn't actually doing its job. Sometimes it's because maybe I gave myself an injection where there was tons of scar tissue and I went to sleep and none of that insulin actually did what it was supposed to because it didn't get past the scar tissue and I woke up and I was in DKA. Common symptoms include thirst, weakness, vomiting, confusion, and stomach pain. When your body develops ketones because of a high blood sugar, that's very different than being in actual DKA. Ketones can be present and you might not be really feeling that sick at all. DKA implies that there are so many of those ketones that your body is overwhelmed and toxic. The only DKA experience I have outside of my diagnosis was when I was in high school. I was an assistant manager of a movie theater and I was stringing up Christmas lights outside and it was like eight degrees outside. It was freezing and I had an insulin pump at the time and my insulin pump was in, you know, tucked underneath my coat. So it wasn't exposed to the cold air, but I must have been out there long enough that the cold air did completely kill the potency of my insulin. I went to a friend's house that night for a sleepover, and next thing I know in the morning, I am puking constantly. I haven't consumed anything. As soon as I drink water, it comes right back up. I was too sick to drive home, so my mother had to actually come and get me, even though I had a car there. By 10 a.m. that morning, I had already thrown up like eight times. I didn't realize I was in DKA. I thought I had the flu and that my blood sugar was high from the flu. This was like the first time I'd ever experienced it. I felt like my whole body was shutting down. I have never felt so awful before. Nothing I have ever experienced has ever felt anything like DKA. That is the worst feeling that I have ever experienced. How do you prevent DKA? Well, sometimes you can't prevent it. If your insulin pump malfunctions, for example, overnight, and you don't get the insulin that you need, there's not a whole lot you could have done about that. Fortunately, they do have more safety systems built into insulin pumps to alert you when the insulin isn't pumping through correctly. In the situation that I was in when I was in high school, there's no safety system that could have prevented that because it wasn't the insulin pump malfunctioning. It was the actual temperature of the outside world killing the potency of my insulin. I hated being in DKA so badly that one of my life goals is to never experience that again. And I will do everything I can, everything that's in my control, to prevent that from happening again. Like making sure I always take my insulin making sure that I'm really careful about the temperatures that I leave my insulin in. Counting carbs, taking my insulin, uh, making sure that if I was using a pump, that if I'm using a pump and I think there might be blood in there or I test my blood sugar and it's really high and I can't think of any real reason why it should be high and there is a possibility that there's blood clotting my infusion site and insulin isn't getting to where it's supposed to go, I could ignore that and I could say, well, I'm just going to give myself more insulin through my pump and hope it all works out. Or I could take an injection with a syringe and then I know that the insulin got into my body and change my pump site. And that's a big pain in the butt. But if it prevents DKA, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. DKA can absolutely result in death. It can absolutely result in a coma. I have a friend in high school who decided one night that he didn't want to be diabetic anymore. He skipped his insulin, drank a ton of real sugary soda, 
candy, popcorn, chips, whatever, junk food. By morning, he was in a coma, and he was in that coma for three months. When he woke up, he was no longer a drummer because he'd lost the ability of his left arm, and he was no longer one of the football stars. DKA is serious, and I'll do everything I can to prevent it in my own body. I hope you do everything you can to prevent it in yours.